else. So some of those things may, be, may, may need to be tweaked, but um, I will, I guarantee, I'll get that paperwork right. We may have to file amendments, but I will not make the payments for my clients. So when you file a Chapter 13, you have to start paying uh, within 30 days of when you file. So if you have a bi-weekly payment, you get paid every two weeks, your plan has to say, well, I'm going to pay this much every two weeks. You have to have that first payment into the trustee within 30 days. Better, of course, to start immediately. First paycheck or have it on hand. As soon as you get that information where that payment goes, there's different Chapter 13 trustees, send that payment in. As long as you're making that payment, your case should be in pretty good shape. Again, there may be changes in terms of during the course of the plan. Uh, you have a car that's paid off or some other things that you can uh, uh, deal with with your attorney. But the uh, main uh, party you deal with in the, uh, the Detroit Courts, Eastern District of Michigan, is the trustee. The creditors, uh, insecure creditors, basically don't find it worthwhile to spend more money to uh, monitor or send people to keep track of these Chapter 13 cases. The mortgage company will be there. So the mortgage company is there. They'll have a calculation that they figure, well, this is how far behind you are. Throw some attorney fees in. No, we don't know if that matches your records or not. Uh, they have to file a proof of claim with the court under penalty of perjury, what their calculations are. And your attorney uh, should be checking that out. Uh, and there's ways for you to get additional information, again, an accounting information from that mortgage company. What did they do with the payments they received? times the mortgages have been bought and sold and there's issues there so um, it is something you really need an attorney for now are you required to no you can represent yourself but as I say to people you can do your own plumbing you can be your own electrician if you want to but if your wiring goes bad maybe you call the electrician and if your sink is flooding maybe you call a plumber and if you're looking at a Chapter 13, you need to consult an experienced attorney about that. So Chapter 13, payment plan, not necessarily 100%. You have to be in for three years. If you're paying your creditors off in two years, of course, you're done. But if you're under 100% plan, you have to be in for three years. You have to have that budget, what's your income, your gross income, what's the government leave you. Maybe you have child support or something else deducted uh, that's allowable. What do you have left? You have to pay that in, and you have to pay those creditors in your Chapter 13 plan at least as much as it would get if you're in a Chapter 7. If you don't like the Chapter 13, you pull out whenever you want. You call up your attorney, I want out, you file the paper, you're out. You're back where you started. You don't have protection from the creditors. They can redo their books and calculate the interest uh, as if you had never filed bankruptcy. They have to deduct, of course, any payments they received. Or you can't make the payments, there's income and expense changes, other things happen, you can convert or change your case from a 13 to a Chapter 7 if you need to do that. There are debt limits for Chapter 13, it's an odd amount of money, if it's a million thirty thousand for secured debt, 300,000 something uh, unsecured debt. If you owe more than that, you're not eligible for Chapter 13, but we'll talk about Chapter 11, which individual 